you know how you have a rival in Pokemon where someone's like always like following your equal equal strength and you're always like fighting them around the same time. Um, that's kind of what it feels like with Spawn. Like, so I'm joined by the head coach of Hunter Thieves, uh, Golden Glue, after a back and forth game or a pretty chaotic game with um, FlyQuest. Golden Glue, what went wrong in that game? Um, so what went wrong in that game is that uh, we weren't able to really snowball our early lane bottom into any like meaningful control. Um, and then the game kind of was like pretty close until it exploded where we basically like all died in a bottom fight. Top also got solo killed. And then from that point on, like we are, we, ha we had to be pretty desperate to find good fighting angles. And I think there was a couple of times where we didn't pull the trigger fast enough. We were, we were indecisive on our engages and, um, it kind of like made us like bleed out. Okay. As a, as a fan who was really enjoying that game, it seemed like you guys were pulling the trigger and it seemed like you guys were finding angles, very creative angles that despite being six, 7,000 gold behind, you were actually getting really close to getting so many different kills. Um, and that sort of makes me confident in a hundred thieves. I watched them last year and they weren't very decisive. They were a lot of like, we'll wait until late game before we do anything. It seems like this team is very different. Is that um, the mentality that you're trying to um, encourage your 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 team that, hey, don't back down? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to instill that in my players. The idea that it doesn't matter if you die, it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, just like go for the play. I really believe that's like the only way you can learn. Um, and I think that we did really try this game to find the creative angles. Um, there was just a couple times where we were a bit slow to recognize the opportunity. And then it ended up in like really close fights. But because we didn't take it during like maybe the golden window to, to start the fight, um, we would end up losing it. All right. And um, you were the coach for DSG. They were the head coach. You guys won challengers. You get promoted. You have another rookie roster that you're working with. Um, my question is... First of all, what sort of structures have you put in place to allow the rookies to like develop? It seems like you guys gave a lot of, especially the first first week, you guys gave um, Sniper like counter pick, last pick, you guys banned for him, you guys were giving him a lot of resources. It seems like you're really trying to put your bot lane in a position, or your, your rookies in a position of like success. Um, so how are you in, in terms of like, um, backstage off of uh, the actual gameplay how are you providing for these workers to develop them into legacy players yeah so i mean i had some like routines that i built up through the years of coaching that i like doing for all my players and teams stuff that like how i run my meetings and how i review the games um i like to think that the reason i've been able to be successful with like different rookie rosters is that i'm able to like kind of just listen to what the players need like listen and wait and see and and see what like each rookie player or like what they're missing and what they need help with um i think there is not really like a one way to make every rookie roster succeed so i just try to give them a lot of space that they need to like grow and improve and not try too hard to like micromanage them and uh, I, I think i've seen a lot of success because of that mindset all right i i did say before this um whole split started that I actually have a lot of confidence with Golden Glue because he already worked previously with Meech so that a lot of people are sleeping on Hunt but I think that even if they don't do well in spring, that they will be a team that constantly improves. And I think that's something that we're seeing is that the team, um, despite being a lot of people putting them like seventh or sixth, it's actually punching above their weight. You know, you guys beat TL. Oh, s speaking of Team Liquid, um, you have a bit of a rivalry with um, Spawn. Uh, you were both head coaches. You played against each other multiple times uh, in Academy, and then you both got promoted the same uh, year. You both played the first game uh, of the split against each other. You actually won that game. Um, is there really a rivalry, or am I just like kind of making that up? Yeah, I mean, no, what, what you're saying is valid. It kind of feels like, uh, you know how you have a rival in Pokemon where someone's like always like following your equal equal strength, and you're always like fighting them around the same time um that's kind of what it feels like with spawn like we're friendly guys i don't think we, there's no way like actually like personal beef between us but it's definitely a fun rivalry that we have um you know in academy we were both like usually the top top two teams so it was just back and forth every finals um and like a lot of fun so i have a lot of respect for him and i'm 
it feels really cool that I just like I do have a, a, this rival that we have very like similar paths, um, and it's definitely someone that like I really enjoy uh, competing against. All right, uh, Spawn uh, it used to be a professional in like actual sports. You were a professional in esports, and I think even sports you played or not professional, but you played uh, football, didn't you? You were like uh, yeah, I played Texas high school football, and it was it was pretty intense. And I played sports for pretty much my whole childhood how does that translate to you um coaching because a lot of people don't have that experience yeah i think my s- traditional sports background like helps me a lot when it comes to when it when i was playing and especially now that i'm coaching um i think that typically in, in esports the the coaches are like missing a lot of um they're missing a lot of like i guess what I would, would say they're missing is like the ability to inspire your players, um, kind of like lead them. I think a lot of like GMs and esports coaches, like they lean too much into just focusing purely on strategy and not like the human or their emotional like connection with the player. So I think uh, at least when I was in football, like my coaches really focused on that, like focus on the like the our values and how like having good values uh, can like make you. A better player and like a better person so i like to think that i try to focus a lot on not only the strategical aspect but also just uh growing my players as like into young adults and into men so in in sport you mentioned this the coaches almost seem like a parental figure and a lot of times actually the coach is in direct contact with the parents and we don't of, of like the the players and we don't really see that in esports is that something that you brought you know, you have like three rookies. Is that something that you uh, deploy or is that not really a thing? I have met with like uh, some of Sniper's family members. I have got dinner with them. Um, I wouldn't say it's something that like I necessarily, it's not easy to do in esports because everyone is like moving here. So unless they're like visiting or something, you don't really get to like have that connection. Um, but I definitely would love to do that more. I think it's a great thing for uh, like for a coach to do is to kind of like, uh, you know, make even the family feel like you're supporting their son, you know? All right. Awesome. My last question for you is, um, why should people be a uh, hundred thieves fans? I think people should be hundred thieves fans because, um, I think we're trying to do something challenging and difficult. And I think the way the people that we have, like our players are, um, they're really putting in like 110% and trying to improve. And we have the youngest, we have the youngest roster out of, uh, everyone in the league, the least experience, at least. Um, so I think we're trying to do something challenging, and ever, and we're all trying our best. So I think that's why uh, people should support 100 Thieves. Did you practice that? That was really good. No, I was just off the top of my noggin. I just shake, <laughs> I just shake the monitor, but yeah, right off my head. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you guys succeed, but not not Sunday. We'll we'll do our best, no matter what. <laughs> All right. Take care, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching that interview. You'll notice this week I didn't use the word like 5,000 times a sentence, which I'm happy about. The interviews I did were pretty good. I'm happy with the answers that I got. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? What are you waiting for? Just just do it. Just, just subscribe.